What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrubby here back again with another video. Hope you guys are having a great day. I know I am. Today is going to be the last day of the 12 days of Scrubs. Only one upload today. It's going to be uh, one of my longer story times yet and it's going to be about one of my mortal enemies named Becky. I'm going to call it the Becky Saga just because I don't know what else to name it. Real talk. Hope y'all are having an absolutely fantastic Christmas Eve. Drop me a like if you're hyped for Christmas and without further ado, let's get into this story time. Amen. You would think that it's illegal. I can't quiet now. Lay low when you reach so I'm wiping now. Make an ounce like the bread, cause you love the sound just so I'm Alright guys, so I'm gonna be honest with you, one of my biggest pet peeves when I was in school was the type of people who like always had to be on the teacher's good side. Even if that meant that they would sell out the entire class or like make everybody do more homework, they would do anything to be the teacher's pet. And like listen dog, dog food is not even that good, it's not worth being a pet, I'm telling y'all, the life is not that luxurious. And when I was in 10th grade, I had a government class with one of these girls named Becky and she literally ended up trying to get me expelled because she didn't like the way I like handled myself in class. Regardless, the entire year was basically a back and forth between me and her of her trying to get me in trouble and me thinking it was funny. And we had a crap ton of run-ins through the year. So instead of doing like 15 different story times, I decided to just put them all in one long story. So uh, yeah, here's the Becky saga and uh, her attempts at trying to get me expelled because I hate doing schoolwork. So this little feud actually ended up starting on the first day of school. You know, Becky didn't waste any time trying to be the teacher's pet. We had gotten this little worksheet given to us on the first day of school where we had to, like, match words to definitions, and, you know, I'll be honest, I just didn't want to do it. It was just busy work that teachers give out so they don't really have to do anything, so I was just copying the person next to me. Yes, it was easy to do, and I know I shouldn't have cheated, and it was the first day of school, and I should have just done the work considering it was easy, but, you know, I was just not in the the mood to do it and if you're in class and someone hands you a busy work assignment that you don't want to do and the person next to you was breezing through it you might copy them that's all I'm trying to say everyone who's like controversial with that is definitely a nerd bro I'm sorry if you think me cheating in class is controversial then this isn't the channel for you you want to click off now Regardless, there's just an unspoken rule in school that I feel like there is where if you see someone cheating on an assignment, even if it's really easy, if it's not affecting you, there's just no reason to snitch, you know? Mind your damn business. If you want to do the word search and match the definitions, then that's totally fantastic. No one's going to stand in your way. In fact, more power to you. You are less lazy than me. Congratulations. But if you see me trying to cheat and I'm not cheating off you, it doesn't matter, you know? just mind your business. It's not that deep. But I guess minding your business was just not something that was in Becky's wheelhouse of skills, bro. Like, if this girl were a video game character, her stats would be zero for minding her own business and maxed out for super annoying. Because she was sitting right behind me, and when she sees that I'm cheating, she literally raises her hand, calls out our teacher's name before he even notices she has her hand up, and goes, Ryan's cheating off his neighbor. And I'm sitting here like, bro, what the hell? You didn't even tap me on the shoulder and tell me to stop cheating. You immediately just raise your hand screaming out that I'm cheating. I'm annoyed because it's like, come on. And the teacher looks up and he just asks me if it's true. And obviously it's the first day of school. So I lied and went, no, I'm not cheating. And she really had no proof I was cheating. She had just yelled it out, you know? So I knew there wasn't really anything he could do. So I was like, no, I didn't cheat. And he just kind of rolls his eyes and just looks down at his desk again. He didn't really care. But Becky, though, really cared, dude. She could not believe that I had just lied to an educator, dude. She's saying under her breath about how I'm so disrespectful to the teacher to lie about that. As if I was going to purposely get in trouble on the first day of school. And apparently she's so mad that she's like jabbing her pencil in my back to try to get my attention for me to turn around. So I I finally turn around when she's jabbing her pencil into my back and I'm like, what do you want? And she sneers at me and says that she's like not gonna tolerate cheating in her presence and that academia, which is, you know, the word she used, even though it belongs in the 1750s. Like, it's a sophomore government class, okay? This isn't a doctorate program. Academia applies to education that actually matters. I don't remember anything from that class anyways. What are you referring to this as if it's like the most serious course of your life? Regardless, she's sneering at me and she's like academia is very serious and I do not plan you know 
to stand by while you don't take it seriously. And if you want to be a loser, then that's on you. But I think you should rethink your life. Yeah, that's right. Calling me a loser, telling me to rethink my life because I don't value this class. And this is literally so annoying to me, bro. Like, first of all, it's the first day of school. If you don't want to play nice on the first day, then this is obviously going to get worse throughout the year because this is when you're supposed to be the most patient. I've literally been sitting in this chair for 20 minutes. This girl's already trying to start beef with me, bro. Like I said, if you don't want to cheat in class, then guess what? You don't have to cheat, bro. <laughs> Fantastic. Good for you. But I really don't care what you think about what I'm doing. It's my grade, all right? This isn't communism, Becky. We don't have a communal grade book. And while you're willing to do all the work to put in an A, I'm just not. So it's it's just different strokes for different folks. And I respect people who put in the work, but just don't be like Becky and get up in my face telling me that I have to take this class seriously because you take it seriously. Believe it or not, I don't care what you're taking seriously and what's even worse is the kid that i'm copying off at this point turns around and goes i really don't care that he was copying off me so like even the person i'm literally cheating off of doesn't care whatsoever totally understands the situation but she's just not dropping it dude anyways i turn back around and she's still giving this speech to me about how i need to take education more seriously blah 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 and what i did next was really immature i'm gonna admit it but it was funny I just turned around and like marked her paper with like just one mark on my with my pencil because I knew it would drive her crazy and I was like hey school is stupid and if you don't like people cheating on tests then you're really not gonna like sitting behind me the entire year because I'm going to cheat on every on every single test like I told her that and she is just looking at me dumbfounded dude the death stare as if I have just said that you know I was on the wrong side of World War II she could not believe that I would dare mark her paper say that school is dumb and admit that I was gonna cheat on tests dude and I'm laughing and I just turn back around and I don't care there's only a few minutes left in class and I just didn't want to deal with it dude and I can feel her eyes like staring into the back of my head bro just the hatred and she's you know saying stuff under her breath that she thinks is really gonna annoy me and it just doesn't like it's just funny to me and the next day I come in and I sit down and she's trying to get my attention again I guess she wanted to continue the conversation and she's like kicking my chair and I'm pretending that she doesn't exist which is just making her mad so she's just like kicking my chair harder and harder throughout the entire class and the whole class I'm ignoring her and finally the bell rings on the second day of class after she's been kicking my chair and I look at her and I'm like this is gonna be a fun year you know and I just smiled at her and she's like oh yeah you think I'm gonna drop it that easy you think I'm gonna let you get away with cheating and I was like listen I'm just saying it's gonna be a fun year that's it and to be honest with you after the second day of school I really thought that it was gonna calm down we didn't have a test for a while so it's not like there was anything for me to cheat on and I just thought it wasn't that big of a deal like yeah, it was fun to mess with her, but I would have been fine never beefing with this girl again, bro. It was annoying, but I didn't really care that much. It was just an hour of the day. And I'll admit that sometimes I can be the guilty one when it comes to, like, starting fights and whatnot. But I was really just minding my own business. And Becky decided to involve the entire class and now for two days had been trying to, like, argue with me about it. So the third day of school comes. This is only the third day. And I walk into class and Becky is sitting in the desk behind me, grinning ear to ear bro which like is just weird she's a little too happy to see me you know listen I'm sure her mother would be equally happy to see me because uh, I spend a lot of time at that house Ugh. but regardless considering that every other time me and this girl have literally ever interacted we've just been arguing the fact that she's now looking super excited that I'm here definitely is freaking me out a little bit you know and I'm all about forgive and forget but I just got a weird vibe so I sit down and I like start getting my stuff out and as I do I feel this light tap on my shoulder and I turn around and it's Becky's face with like the creepiest smile I've ever seen in her entire life, bro. It was like she stuck her nose in Pablo Escobar's backpack and just took a giant sniff. She's looking hyped. She's looking excited. So happy. And obviously this makes me suspicious. And she asked me like pretty firmly, you know, very clearly, like enunciating every word very carefully. On the first day of school during this class, did you copy your classmates homework? And so immediately with like the weirdness in which she says it, I know something is up. So I start looking around and I see that she had in her left hand, horribly hidden, like behind the desk was her phone. 
and the flash is on like she had forgotten to turn the flash off so it's obvious that she's recording this and she thinks i'm about to admit to like copying homework on a recording and listen i don't mind if you're gonna try to like screw me i guess if we have some beef and you want to try to get video evidence of me cheating on a test fine but come on don't insult my intelligence like you think i'm dumb enough to not notice the flashlight shining on me while you're secretly recording me at least respect me enough to like make it hard to tell you're trying to record me obviously I noticed she's trying to record me so at that point I just decide that I'm gonna mess with her because she really thinks that she's you know outsmarted me here and is gonna get me in trouble and I'm gonna admit this so I just look at her and I go me I, I would never cheat I love this class but if I remember correctly didn't you ask to see my answers because you weren't smart enough to figure it out? And the look on her face, dude, she was like, uh, no, I would never cheat. My goodness, me? I never. I would never cheat. Then I'm just smiling because I can tell she's trying to, like, get me to look bad. And now I'm spinning it on her and I'm saying she cheated. So she very quickly, like, stops the recording on her phone and is like, um, well, I know you cheated. But, like, do you really think I cheated? Why do you think I cheated? I didn't cheat. And she keeps getting angrier and angrier. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I didn't cheat. I didn't cheat. I'm just denying doing it. Finally, after a bit of just arguing with me and me denying it, she stops. But that's when I realized she was not going to let this go, bro. Like, she had really stooped to trying to secretly record me to get me to admit that I cheated on a test within three days of school. And after this incident, apparently her hatred for me cooked even more. It was kind of like a stew that was sitting on the stove all day just slowly cooking. You know, when uh, the crock pot is out and your mom puts that stuff in and it'd be cooking all day. You come home, you know it's just been sitting there. Yeah, that was her hatred for me, dude. Uh, instead of a delicious stew, it was just anger and festering emotions of like, oh, I hope this guy gets chlamydia. Ah. The next like really memorable thing that I remember her doing is one time we had to write these essays about like an important historical figure from US history that, you know, we thought was important or whatever the hell, like one of those assignments, you know, I don't remember the specifics of it. All I know is that I didn't do it. And uh, we had to have like cited, you know, books and whatnot and articles in our essay and we had to present it to the class. And I have always been very, very good at talking on my feet. I don't know what it is, you know. There's a reason I can make, like, eight YouTube videos a day. It's just a gift. I, I don't know. And regardless, so we get into class and I'm writing my essay as people are presenting. And I'm just kind of freeballing it. And the facts that I'm using are, like, very obvious facts. It's stuff that, you know, is just general knowledge. And I think I'm going to get away with it. So I get up there and I'm like, ah, oh, my favorite person in U.S. history is George Washington. He was the first president of the United States. He's on the $1 bill. I'm doing a much better job talking about it. You know, I was presenting it like my grade dependent on it, like it did, but obviously my facts were pretty stupid. I think the rest of the facts I used was like he led a, a bunch of people across the Delaware River during the Revolutionary War. He stepped down after two terms, which is why it became the precedent for like why presidents can only be there for two terms. Just stuff that I knew about George Washington. And after we present, there was this period where we were supposed to get questions from everybody in the class. You know, oh, does anyone have any questions? And you just really hope that nobody says anything, because let's be honest here, no one wants to answer questions. Nobody wants to sit there and talk about their favorite U.S. historical figure. I mean, unless you're Becky and you're like, oh, that's the coolest thing in the world. I don't know. So a couple people toss me some softball questions, and I'm very appreciative. You know, they're like, why do you like George Washington? And I'm like, he won the revolution. Revolutionary War. It's kind of a good reason. He's why we exist, right? And then Becky raises her hand, and I'm like trying not to call on her, bro, but the teacher is like, Becky, go ahead. What's your question? And she's like, I just wanted to know where your facts are from. Like, I didn't really hear any citations. And, uh, you know, I'm like, oh, the history book on our desk, because I knew it was a U.S. history book. And she's like, oh, can you tell me what page? Um, you yeah, know, I don't. I don't think I wrote down the page, actually. I uh, wow, I uh, must have forgot. And she's like, really? How do we know your facts are real then, huh? Like, how do we know you're not lying? And I was like, oh, you're more than welcome to check me on any of my facts if you think I'm lying. And she's like, all right, well then, do you mind giving me the facts again? I'll check the book right now. I'll go ahead and check. 
And the teacher is like, all right, yeah, Ryan, do you mind just saying the facts so we can go really quick? Because they were trying to teach us about how to cite things properly because apparently it was going to be the most important thing in college. So I list my facts, which are just like really obvious, and she starts looking. And she can't find anything saying that I'm wrong, but she also can't find anything expressly saying that I'm right on one page the way I said it. Because I paraphrased, bro. I didn't take anything from the book. Like, we were supposed to use exact quotes, and I just didn't. And she is sitting there for like 10 minutes nobody else is allowed to present as she's just going fact by fact just trying to prove me wrong and she's like oh yeah well how do you know George Washington was the first president huh how do you know that and I'm like well are you saying that he wasn't and she's like well I I'm just saying how do we know that you're not lying if 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 there's no citation if there's if there isn't anything we can find how do we know he's not lying and I'm like I mean uh, excuse me if I'm wrong teacher but I'm pretty sure George Washington led troops across the Delaware am I wrong and he's like no that's that's correct like he has that down and I know that's somewhere in there and she is losing it bro she is trying to make me look dumb so bad and finally the teacher is like all right that's enough Ryan you know you should have done better on the citation you know I'm gonna have to give you a C for failing to cite anything which really pissed me off because my presentation was an A bro like if she wouldn't have started pressing me about it I would have been fine and it wasn't even like my presentation was a mess there was no reason to doubt any of the facts I'm saying it's not like I was like George Washington and invented Tesla and is the grandfather of Elon Musk. No, I just said he was the first president. I thought everybody knew that. So she gets me a C. She considered that a victory, but like she was really, really going to that level to try to get me in trouble. So that was annoying enough, dude. And after that, I just kind of tried to lay low and avoid it as much as humanly possible. She would still try to get me in trouble, but never could prove anything, dude. And the next time there was another thing that she actually almost nailed me on, I, it was close. So I would skip this government class a lot, dude. Um, at the time when I was in school, I was in debate, and we had to talk about government stuff all the time. And the way that our government teacher had structured everything, classwork was like 2% of our grade and like tests were 95% so I could show up and ace the test and not really ever have to be there so I just wouldn't go a lot I would just go do whatever I wanted and one day I'm walking around the hallway with a couple of my friends just kind of vibing and Becky's in the hallway going to the bathroom and she sees me and she goes why aren't you in class and I go um you know I was sick I had no excuse bro she had me she had me dog I was caught and she's like oh well would our teacher feel interested in this and I was like uh you know I don't think you you should tell him and she's like well why not so I explained to her my situation which was I can just ace the test so I don't really need to be there I was honest with her dude I could have lied and been like oh because I'm sad like no I didn't lie I just said I'll be honest with you I can get a solid B in the class without ever being there so that's what I'm gonna do and she's like do you think that our teacher is a joke and uh, I'm gonna be honest it wasn't that I thought our teacher was a joke I just think our teacher didn't care he happened to be the coach of a sports team I'm not gonna say which one because if you knew which high school I went to that'd be really easy to figure out but you know he really did not care about this government class I mean sure he would run it but there was a reason 99% of the work we would get was busy work because he was too busy thinking about the sport he was coaching and I don't blame him who wants to teach government to a bunch of ungrateful brats but anyways she take pulls out her phone and takes a picture of me and I'm like ah crap and at that point, I'm like, I got to get off school campus, you know, because if I get busted, I'm screwed. So I go to my house, which was near uh, campus. You know, I could walk to school. I skip the rest of the day that day just trying to figure out what I'm going to do. I go back into school the next day. I go into government. And sure enough, my teacher asked to see me in the hallway. And I'm like, ah, crap, dude. So I go out there and he says, you know, you have a lot of absences in my class. And I'm like, yeah, I know. And he says, uh, is there a reason for that? And so I'm going to be honest at this point, I know he probably has a picture of me skipping class. So I look him in the eyes and I go, look, sir, I'm going to be honest with you. You told me that your grading structure was set up in a way where like I didn't have to come to class. And as long as I did good enough on the test, I could still get like a B or an A in the class. And I already knew the information because of a class I'm taking simultaneously, so I just don't really need to be in class to learn the information. And because this guy, like, wasn't super uptight because he was the coach of a sports team, he's like, well, I appreciate you being honest, da-da-da-da-da. And he basically tells me that from that point on, for me only, classwork is 50% of the grade. So I didn't really get in trouble. I think she expected me to, like, get screwed and get in a lot more trouble. But because I was honest and I just told 
told the teacher, like, look, I'll be real with you. Um, the way you have this set up is really dumb, and I don't have to be there to get an A. I, I think he kind of just admired the fact that I was, like, just being honest. So he kind of let it slide, but I did have to start being in class all the time. And here's what I don't understand about her master plan, right? You don't like me, Becky. You think I'm annoying. You think that I'm the worst person ever. So why are you doing everything in your power to make me be in class more? Like, if I'm skipping all the time, just let me skip all the time. Because guess what? <gasps> if I'm not there, I can't annoy you. It's simple. Like, it was so weird. She might have had a crush on me or something, dog. Like, she seemed so hell-bent on getting me to be in class all the time, even though she hated me. Anyways, that situation kind of sucked. She had a big smile on her face when I came back into class, and I I was like, I'm not in trouble, I'm just gonna have to be in class a lot more. And she was like, hmm, well, I guess that's what you get for thinking skipping's okay. Like, thanks, Mom, I really appreciate you worrying about me, but I don't need another mom, dude. I have one mom at home that's sitting there yelling at me all the time for having bad grades. I don't need you on top of it, dude. It's just so annoying, bro. Like, people just need to mind their business. If I don't want to go to class and I can get an A, that's, that's my business, okay? This is all, like, years old now, and I still get irritated thinking about it, bro. Becky, if you're watching this, that's not your real name, but if you figure this out, you still suck. So, after that situation, I guess she took that to, like, you know, another challenge. I wasn't challenging challenging her dude I just was annoyed with the situation so she decided at that point that the only way to teach me a lesson about paying attention in class was to like make my grades suffer because once again she didn't think through her plan and uh, I would be in class but I wouldn't be paying attention I would be on my phone I would be napping I was just like there whenever we would get the homework or the classwork I would do it as fast as humanly possible and then stop paying attention again and that annoyed her even more than me not being there like the fact that I just knew how to do the work really pissed her off which once again not my fault that I told you why I wasn't in class and it's not even like I was good at school most of the time to be honest usually I could not get a good grade to save my life this just happened to be a subject that I knew quite a bit about so it wasn't like I really needed to try so she decided one day that she was just gonna try to screw me over and she got up and volunteered to get everybody scantrons in our area and I'm not gonna lie I didn't want to get up so I was like okay you go ahead get those scantrons scantrons do whatever you gotta do she gets up comes back hands everybody the scantrons and i don't know once again if she thought that i was the dumbest person on the planet and wouldn't notice or like i really don't know what her plan was but i go to start doing the test and i instantly realize that there's a couple bubbles that are already filled in one is already filled in uh 50 is already filled in she had tried to like fill in the bubbles so i would get off track fill in number one is number two and then go down the list and fail the test like she had tried to sabotage me taking the scantron test and I noticed and I was like okay all right this is a really really dumb way to sabotage me I really don't know if she thought I wasn't gonna notice I'll admit it was sneaky but like come on you think I wasn't suspect already when I was getting something from you the girl who's already tried to screw me over 80 times so I did what anyone would do in this situation I got my eraser and I like casually erased it and just did the test the right way I didn't go get a new scantron I didn't call her out on it because my plan was that when we got the test back I would just get an you know a decent grade I don't know if I was gonna get a hundred percent but like I would get a B or an A and she would be dumbfounded because her plan was to make me fail the test so sure enough I do my best I go turn it in and I do it quick and I come back and she goes oh test easy huh and she's like being nice and I'm like yeah it was pretty easy you know I, it was it was not that bad I'm not gonna lie I had myself a pretty fun time filling that out it was a great scantron uh, very fond memories with it I'm gonna take it fishing maybe next Christmas and she's like mm, it would just be funny if like you failed the test for some reason because you're just so confident you know like wouldn't that be just kind of ironic which once again you're exposing yourself like do you think that's not suspect oh hello person that really doesn't like me why are you commenting on how bizarre it would be if I suddenly failed a test like you haven't been trying to screw me over the entire time so for the next couple days she's just constantly asking if my grade for the test has been put in the grade book yet if I've seen what I got on the test yet just keeps asking me keeps asking me and so one day I walk into class and our teacher is like all right guys I'm handing back the tests and he's handing them back and he gets to our row and he goes good job Ryan and he hands me my test and by the grace of God I had gotten like a 97% on the test and I'm handing back and Becky had only gotten like an 
82% on the test. Not that it matters, bro. Like, I'm not a type of person that is ever gonna be like, oh, I'm better than you because I got a higher grade. That stuff's annoying. But god damn, it felt so good to get a higher grade than this chick just because of the situation. So I hand it back to her and I go, hey, if you ever need help studying, let me know. And she goes, oh, what did you get? And like grabs my scantron out of my hand and goes, what, how? Because sure enough, bro, 97%. And she's like, Did, was there anything wrong with your Scantron? And I was like, oh, no, not really. Not that I noticed, bro. Like, I, I didn't really notice anything wrong with it. And she's like, oh, that's, that's weird. And under her breath, she says, how lucky can you be? This lady was convinced that she had like offset my answer by one. I hadn't noticed. And then I had just by good luck by the dumbest luck on the planet, somehow managed to get like a 97% just randomly filling in a Scantron with the wrong answers. I was low-key making her convinced that like, I don't know, bro, that I was just the luckiest person on the planet, which I'm not gonna lie, is pretty funny, dude. Like as far as trolling goes, just convincing somebody that like I was chosen by the academic gods to get an A on this test is pretty hilarious, dude, especially when it's her trying to sabotage me. Like it's like I said, I feel like convincing somebody they're crazy is totally okay if they're the one starting it. It's not like I dared her to try to make me fail the test. She tried to make me fail. So yeah, I was gonna let her think that I was just the luckiest person on the planet because that was a lot funnier. And for the rest of the day, dude, I could just tell that in her head, like, it was just messing with her that I had gotten such a high grade on this test. Like, she could not believe that somehow I had managed to get myself an A on this test. Because from her perspective, imagine, I admitted that I didn't notice it was sabotaged and then still got an A. Like, that has to piss you off. So that situation was a W for me, dude. But the next situation, I'm not gonna lie, once again, she got a W. Yeah, she was my worst enemy and I won the war. She won a couple battles. I have to give her her credit, dude. She ended up getting me to take down one of my videos through the school. I wasn't a YouTuber on this channel at the time. Like, Scrubby didn't exist. Scrubs didn't exist. I didn't even talk in my videos. All I did back in the day really was, like, make Call of Duty montage videos, you know? Like, I would trick shot and edit them. And one day I was talking about it with one of my friends in class. And uh, I guess Becky was over here us and I mentioned that I had done an edit to a ASAP Rocky song and the particular ASAP Rocky song was not very school appropriate for those of you that don't know what it is uh, it was it was effing problems I can't say the word because of YouTube's rules but you know that song and it was sick I'm not gonna lie it was a dope edit anyways she went home and found it brought it to school took it to the teacher and was like this is so inappropriate he's been telling everyone to watch this listen to the language blah 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 and I didn't know about this and I guess the teacher had thought it was super inappropriate it wasn't my government teacher it was a different teacher and I get called down to the Dean's office and like the Dean's sitting there and he's like oh, why have you been uploading such inappropriate videos to YouTube? And I'm like, dog, what are you talking about? Like, I, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Because I really was just making Call of Duty edits. It was not like I was making booty clapping tutorials, you know? There was nothing sus about it. I was literally just putting weird Call of Duty clips, good Call of Duty clips to a song. I really don't know what I was doing wrong. But sure enough, he turns around and it's my edit. And it's like, I love that. That's my problem. And he's like, is that appropriate for school? And I'm like, no, that's why I didn't do it at school. And he's like, well, then why were you talking about it in class? And, you know, obviously, I'm like, what are you talking about? And he says that a concerned student that would prefer to remain anonymous came forward and let him know that I was promoting this in class and he wanted to make it very clear that our school didn't take this lightly and inappropriate, blah, 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 blah. You know, old people stuff, boomer, boomer, blah, blah, blah. And he tells me to take the video down. And I'm not going to lie, like, at the time I wasn't a YouTuber, you know, it wasn't like I was getting paid for the videos or anything. And uh, the fact that, you know, like, I, I didn't really have ground to stand on. Like, I, it was a swearing song. Like, I could have put my foot down. And now I would have. But, like, I'm not going to lie. At the time, you guys aren't going to like this. I just caved. I just deleted the video. But, like, she got me. She got me. She got it taken down. I'm not going to lie. And after that, dude, I think she was just kind of on this high of, like, actually affecting me. Because it didn't make me sad, but she got, like, a victory in her head. Because what she committed to doing next was definitely, like, full-scale crazy, dude. I'm not gonna lie. If you thought she'd been taking her levels of trying to get me in trouble commitment to the next level already, it gets even crazier. The next thing that she decided to do 
was she knew I would skip class a lot. Uh, like I said, our school had been trying to do this, like, oh, tests matter more than homework thing. So in my government class and in my English class, I would skip class relatively frequently. Uh, once my government teacher changed the rules, obviously I would stay in class more, but after the semester, he changed the rules back, which in my opinion was basically him giving me the green light to, like, do whatever I wanted as long as I could pass the tests. So I started skipping again, and uh, I think Becky was pissed because our teacher was basically letting me do it. Like, I wasn't there, I was still getting good grades, and I don't think he cared one way or the other. So she decided that she was gonna start taking pictures of me every time I would be uh, on campus, but not in class, because I was skipping class. And I really didn't know that she was doing it. She would, like, low-key do it in stalker ways. She would just stand in the hallway, like, at the end, and as soon as I would come around the corner, she'd take a picture and then run and hide. Like, I'm telling y'all, this lady took it to the next level. She she basically must have stalked me for weeks and weeks, just getting photographic evidence of almost every time I'm skipping class. She said that she followed me for like two weeks and uh, she got pictures of me skipping class like 11 times. I'm not proud of that. You shouldn't skip class. This is not an endorsement of doing it. I'm not saying that like you should do what I'm doing. I'm just telling the story, but I will say at the same time, if you are getting pictures of me skipping class that often, doesn't that mean that you are all also not in class to be getting pictures of me seems a little hypocritical to me like somehow you got to be getting all those photographs right unless I'm mistaken if you're getting pictures of me not in class that would mean you're not in class but whatever I guess uh, we're just not gonna have to do anything with making sense and she went to the teacher he didn't care obviously so she decided to go over his head and take it straight to the Dean and I think she thought because the Dean had already like you know yelled at me once about the YouTube video that he was gonna put his foot down and like really reprimand me and get me in a bunch of trouble. I really think that's what she thought because she takes all this proof to the dean and at the time apparently there was this rule in the school district and I only know this because she threatened me with it when we were sitting outside of the office waiting was that if somebody skipped school like more than 10 times then they had to get expelled and sent to a special school for delinquent children or something. She just kept saying that over and over again because we ended up getting called into the dean's office and I get in there and Becky is sitting there with a huge smile on her face and the first thing she says to me when I see her is like I got you I got you like that's the first thing she's saying is that she thinks that she's she's got me screwed which I'm not gonna lie I was pretty scared about because then she starts explaining how she had gotten pictures of me skipping class and da 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 and I'm really starting to think that I'm in trouble because keep in mind I have gotten in trouble with this dean before and usually not that every dean's like this but usually if you get in trouble once with the dean they're not very likely to let you slide it tends to be like once they've seen your face once they know you as a troublemaker and if you come back to their office again they keep assuming that you're a troublemaker in my case that might not have been the worst way to look at it but regardless i thought i was screwed so we go into the office and she's showing the dean all these pictures of me skipping class she really was a fan bro like honestly she might as well have run a stan account with how many pictures of me she had in her camera roll she's just sitting there there, like explaining how I would skip class on this date and this date and this date and the Dean is kind of like okay well do you have anything to say for yourself and I'm gonna be honest there's photographic proof I really didn't have anything I could say to like deny it was me if she wouldn't have had proof I 100% would have just denied it not gonna lie because I would have been like prove it you can't aha I didn't do it I couldn't really do that in this situation so I did what I thought was my only play I just started telling the Dean that like my grades were fine you know and uh, how I had had last semester a situation where I had to be in class to get 50% of my grade and I had done it but the two classes that I was skipping I had A's in and we had just switched to like the computerized grade system it was the new canvas but when parent link got taken down we switched to the canvas thing so he pulls up my canvas and sure enough in the two classes I'm skipping I have an A in fact I think in English I had over a hundred percent because that teacher loved me and I did some extra credit stuff and he's like okay and she starts saying how it's stupid that I should be allowed to get good grades and not do the homework or the classwork. I would do the homework sometimes, sometimes. And how it was ridiculous that I would be allowed to pass without actually being in class. And she's calling the new rules about tests being worth more than classwork really stupid. But I don't think she realized that it was
was the dean who had implemented this rule. When the dean had come in, we had a new dean or the, the new principal, like the new administration, they came in as kind of a group. The deans and the principal had held an assembly and talked about how like they knew homework sucked and they were gonna do everything in their power to alleviate it and make sure that we didn't have it as much. And we still had a lot because like a lot of teachers just kind of refused to get rid of it. But anyhow, she's calling this rule stupid to the guy who invented the rule, which is probably not the best way to get him to do what you want, you know? And he finally lets her stop and he's like, all right, well, anything else you have to say? And she's like, I just think that he needs to be punished so he understands that it's important to be in class. And he goes, Ryan, do you have anything else to say? And this is when I decide to point out to everybody the situation of how did she get all of these pictures? Doesn't that mean that she was also skipping class? And when I point that out, dude, the look on her face, she starts being like, well, um, well, well, it's different because, um, uh, uh, and she realizes, bro, she's got nothing. She's got nothing. And the dean is like, yeah, like, why were you not in class? Like, why were you able to get these pictures? And guess what she says, ladies and gentlemen? Good old hypocrite Becky starts saying that her grades are good, so it's different for her. Ah ha ha, isn't that interesting, bro? The dean at that point just looks annoyed because this girl has been, like, insulting all of his rules or whatnot. And now it's very obvious to him that this is just, like, a personal vendetta for her. Her. She had tried to spin it into somehow she's been very concerned about me and you know I'm not on the right path yada 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 But once this goes down, he's like, oh Yeah, you just hate this dude and are trying to get him in trouble low-key He didn't say that, you know, he couldn't really like say it openly But he was very dismissive after that and it wasn't long after uh, The situation going down that he kind of told us to just get out of his office and leaving the office without me getting in trouble or like basically having Having a prison felony sentence was just a, a massive L for her. I'm not gonna lie. It looked like her ego was pretty bruised. All right, guys, I'm gonna interrupt the video for just one second. On screen now are a couple gift cards. I usually give one away every single day as a way to just say thank you to everyone subscribed with notifications on. Since today's Christmas Eve, I just threw a couple on there. Hopefully you guys enjoy them. Uh, big, big thank you to everyone who is subscribed with notifications on. It helps out the channel a lot, but I guess 80% of the people who watch these videos don't have them on. So if you happen to be one of those people, you might as well press the button. I mean, I literally give away free money. You got nothing to lose, and you can always unsub if you don't like the content. Real talk, Merry Merry Christmas Eve. This is the last of a little series we've been doing called the 12 Days of Scrubs around here. I appreciate everybody subscribe with notifications on. Have yourselves a Merry Christmas Eve, and I'll get back to the story time now. Enjoy the gift cards and subscribe with those noties. Honestly, I think that's when she just broke in her spirit, dude. The defeat was just too real at that point. She had tried to go to my government teacher. Didn't matter. I didn't get in trouble. She tried to go to the dean. Didn't matter. Didn't get in trouble. And uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I really don't know why she hated me so much. I feel like low-key, like she had to have had a little crush on me or something. I don't know. Following me and taking pictures of me to try to get me in trouble for skipping class is like caring about me to a whole new level. Like, oh, I really want you to succeed with your schooling thanks mom regardless after that she didn't really try anything i think that was like her real last go of things but trying to get me expelled is pretty impressive because that definitely would have ruined my life like she was taking it to another level bro if i can't have them nobody can if i would have gotten expelled that would have definitely definitely screwed me over pretty hard ah dude my parents would have killed me real talk though to this day i, I really don't know why she decided to make me her mortal enemy I really don't I didn't even want to beef dude I just had to fight back when I had to you know what I mean like when you're trying to make me fail test when you're taking pictures of me when you're calling me dumb like I, I don't know what you want me to do regardless guys I think that's gonna do it for the video hopefully you enjoyed if you did I would really appreciate you taking a second to press the like button let me know in the comment section down below what you thought this is the conclusion to the 12 days of scrubs so if you could please press the like button and comment if you enjoyed Enjoyed the series overall it's definitely a sign i should do it again next year and a huge huge thank you to everybody who supported it i really hope you guys enjoyed it it was a bunch of fun a walk down memory lane if you will real talk though guys if you're new subscribe turn on those notifications if you want more content i do have a podcast called the scutcast you can find the link down below in the description and if you really like the intro song the spotify link is also down below feel free to give it a listen it does help me out it's also 
also on Amazon and Apple Music. It's just called Run It Up by Project R-Y-X-N. And if you're in the mood for merch, then boy, oh boy, do I have good news for you. Till the end of December, we've got the Karen Ugly sweaters on the Teespring store down below, along with the Ha Ha merch and the OG Sub Club merch. Feel free to check it out. And yeah, last but certainly not least, follow me on Instagram at Scrubby if you want to see my face. If not, that's totally okay too. And I do have Twitter at Scrubby underscore 69. If you want more story time stuff, uh, I do have a TikTok at Scrubby Stories where I post like highlights of my videos and clips and whatnot. So feel free to go give that a follow. And uh, yeah, on that note, guys, this has been your boy Scrubby. Have yourselves a very, very Merry Christmas Eve. Spend it with family. But remember, there's a little other piece of advice that you have to remember to stay smart. Do not get anyone pregnant. And if you do, make sure they're hot. It's an age old adage, but I promise your Thanksgivings and Christmases will be a lot more enjoyable if the person you have a kid with is extremely attractive and you like them. I don't know that for a fact. I'm just assuming, but trust me, I, I feel like it's accurate. And uh, yeah, on that note, I'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. I'm out. Peace.